Africa Dialogue Series is a, is a flagship program of OSA. Uh, and it's a program that combines advocacy, but, but advocacy of what? Advocacy of Africa. Advocacy of Africa's development challenges, but more than that, adv um, advocacy of Africa's vision. Personally, I'm Christine Duarte. I'm the special advisor of the Secretary General on African, on African Affairs. And I have been in this position since August uh, 2020. African Dialogue Series is, um, as I, is an advocacy product. Uh, the idea is to create, um, or can I say, um, a stage, a stage, a stage for African vo voices to debate African challenges and to advocate, to spread it out, Africa's vision. Uh, to tell the world that Africa has a vision, Africa has a wish, and Africa knows the route to deliver the wish. Basically, this is a United Nations, UN, United Nations platform for Africa. The team uh, for 2021, for the African Dialogue Series, is basically uh, inspired in the African Union Team of the Year. As everybody knows, the Team of the Year of the African Union is Arts, Culture and Heritage, Levers for Building the Africa We Want. This is the team of the African Union. In the case of OSA, we try to approach the team from a development standpoint. But we try to approach not only from a development standpoint, but from a forward-looking standpoint, taking COVID-19 disruptions. This is the reason that OSA's team of African Dialogue Series is culture and ownership reshaping mindsets. Because we strongly believe that the African Union Team of the Year is an appeal to us as Africans to, to leverage COVID-19 disruptions, we should read as Africans opportunities, look forward, reset, reboot, and exercise higher levels of ownership. The role of, let's start, the role of culture. Let's start for culture. The role of culture in economic transformation. The role of culture in development. I think the first question to answer your question is, what is culture? And culture for me is our soul. Uh, in the sense that is the feeling of belonging to a community in terms of rights and obligations. If you exercise of your rights and you deliver your obligations towards your community, in this case, Africa, you are in a position to exercise ownership. And by exercising ownership based on this background of belonging, you can build your own destiny, meaning that you can build your own development. Arts and culture shapes the perception of Africa. How can I say? How art and culture shape the perception that international community has towards Africa is because, as I mentioned, uh, we need to go beyond the narrow concept of culture, in my opinion. Culture is arts demonstration, let's say, and craft, paintings, dance, music. But all these are demonstrations, are symbols of a pre-existent culture. And the most important of this pre-existent culture, the most important of our African culture, as I mentioned, is the belonging to a community, is the exercise of ownership. And as demonstration of these cultures, cultures, you use arts 
They can be different. Dance, music, painting, and crafts, you name it. In the case of Africa, uh, we are very rich on these, on these, on these su subjects. I think now it's important for the world, for the international community, to look at our culture as African beyond the artistic demonstrations, but see that as an existence of a, a strong cultural identity that is ready to exercise ownership of its own destiny. At least this is how I feel it as, a, as, as an African, and particularly as an African woman. In my opinion, culture drives, culture drives sustainable development because if you, if you put yourself as an agent of a certain community, again, let's go back to rights and obligations. If I have obligations towards my community, let's say, let's give me an example. I was Minister of Finance for 10 years. How I exercise my political function. I exercise with this strong feeling of belonging to the Cape Verdean community. And by having this strong feeling as my starting point, I do believe that as Minister of Finance, I just leverage my culture to serve my community as Minister of Finance. And this is a relationship between culture, the belonging of a community, which gives you space as an individual and as a community to exercise ownership and to deliver and to deliver sustainable development. Meaning that development in Africa has to become from us, has to become from inside, has to become by us controlling, for example, our economic flows and our financial flows, for example, among other issues. COVID-19, of course, uh, affected, affected African in different ways. Basically, and firstly, uh, the first impact was from, an, uh, from uh, I would say, from a socioeconomic standpoint. Before the virus hit the continent, Africa was already suffering the negative, the negative impact of COVID-19 through the disruptions of the global value chains. As you know, Africa is highly dependent on, on the global va value chains through essentially the export of commodities. And as, if, as everybody knows, these global value chains have been disrupted much before the virus has landed in Africa. Then came the second shock, let's say it this way. The virus has landed has land in the continent and, of course, has put all the governments in a situation to address not only the health challenges, but also the socioeconomic, uh, let's say, uh, challenges coming from the fact that the virus has landed in, in the continent. Uh, we need to remember that our starting point, or the starting point of most of the African countries, uh, was um, a starting point with a very, very uh, small fiscal space to address this situation. So uh, basically, after 25 years of, I would say, quite a strong economic growth, Africa had to face economic recession, a huge lack of financial resources to address the health, uh, or to address the pandemic, so from an health standpoint, as well to address socioeconomic, socioeconomic issues. Of course, in this crisis, and when you have very little, almost none financial resources to address it, 
you need to make a very painful budget reallocations. And basically, what most of the governments did in Africa, they had to put additional resources on the health sector, try to deal with the pandemic if effects, try to confine the negative impacts from the, from the COVID, and taking resources from more medium to long-term investments, social infrastructure, institutional infrastructure, and economic infrastructure. So the bill that Africa will pay for making this short-term allocation will be felt in the next, in the next, in the next years. COVID-19 and innovation. This is a quite interesting subject. Uh, I think it's clear for, every, for everybody that Africa has innovation in its DNA. I think it's clear for everybody. Uh, COVID-19 has just created an opportunity for that potential to be unleashed. And uh, I believe also that everybody is aware that more than 1,000 COVID-19 innovations have been put on our tables, on our table coming from the African, from the African, uh, African continent. The question that we should ask ourselves is because such phenomenon is only happening in COVID-19 times. This is what we should ask ourselves. What we have been missing as policymakers, international civil servants, that this type of environment does not exist on a permanent basis to gather, to collect all this potential in terms of innovative solutions to African problems. I do believe that COVID-19 is giving us an opportunity to assess, first, if we have set up ecosystems, innovations, or ecosystems for innovations, and if not, what is missing in this puzzle. Because going forward and building forward better will not be possible if these innovations are not factoring on a permanent basis from a policy-making standpoint, which means that these innovations that uh, can be produced in Africa should be captured, should be captured in a such way that down the road they become solutions to the problems. And this is, I believe, this is the main goal. What is missing? Maybe you need to pay more attention to the building of ecosystems to unleash Africa's potential from an innovation standpoint. In terms of um, innovations, innovations as opportunities to address COVID-19, let's say, problems. There are a couple, a couple of them, for example, on the education sector, on the health sector that I'm aware of. But I do believe that COVID-19 disruptions will be also factoring in the local value chains. Let's start for this one. Global um, vaccines, for example. Uh, vaccines and the fact that Africa is facing a vaccine divide, I think it's clear for everybody, a vaccine divide is a disruption and is, is a huge opportunity for the pharmaceutical industry in Africa. Maybe it's time, instead of borrowing money to buy vaccines or to import vaccines, maybe you should borrow money to produce vaccines. And this is an opportunity. If this is an opportunity, African Union has set up already a very clear roadmap from a regulatory standpoint for the pharmaceutical industry in Africa is already there. We need just to move into implementation. 
and create the conditions for the African private sector also to take, to take this as an opportunity and to rebuild the pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical industry, the pharmaceutical sector in Africa. African Dialogue series as a main theme, as I mentioned, is, ba is basically culture and ownership, reshaping mindsets. And that main theme is directly inspired from the African Union team of the year, as I just mentioned. Then we, we broke down the, our main team, or OSA's main team, or Africa Dialogue series main, main team, in three, in three sub-teams. The first one is um, sustainable development for sustainable peace, factor in history. Uh, I think the message is clear. Africa is going through a quite unstable period in terms of increasing the increase of situations of instability, terrorism, the Sahel Zone, Southern Africa, north, north part of Mozambique, the central part of Africa. Instead of decreasing, for a couple of reasons, and stability in, in Africa has increased. I think we have here an opportunity to factor in history when searching for solutions, when searching for solutions. The second sub team is arsening culture for economic transformation. Everybody is defending the need for Africa to go through structural socioeconomic transformation. And of course, as I had the opportunity also to mention in this conversation that to do that, we should do it from inside, from inside. We should do it by leveraging our strengths, by recognizing our weaknesses, by uh, facing our threats and by grabbing our opportunities. It is the only way to go from inside. So if everybody agrees on that very simple statement, culture is an important ingredient in this equation. If you want to promote economic transformation from inside, you'd better put culture on the table in this, at the same level as other angles, as other perspectives to address economic transformation. The third sub-team is human capital and heritage, unleashing the potential. COVID-19 has taught to all of us not putting human capital at the center of policy making is a huge mistake. Not only for Africa, even for all the regions in the world, but particularly for Africa. In, in building forward better, in recovering forward better, I think you have an opportunity to address this issue by putting human capital at the center of policy making. And by doing that, of course, again, we need to address culture issues, particularly on the education sector that you need to make each young African, each children in Africa, you need to cultivate in each children in Africa, in each child in Africa, you need to cultivate the sense of belonging to a community so that that child one becomes an adult, is ready to exercise the ownership that is entitled to. Everybody knows that human in Africa plays a driving role. The question is, how can we amplify, uh, from a development standpoint, from an economics transformation standpoint, how can we amplify that drive a role that women plays in all African societies so that 
their role delivers sustainable development at the national level, at the regional level, at the continental level. And I believe this is, this, this is the challenge for everybody, and this is the struggle for us women. We are conscious, we are very conscious of the struggle, and we are being fighting for our space, our entitled space in delivering decision or in participating in the decision-making process so that we, our driver role is taking, is taking into consideration, let's say, in this, in, this, in this way. Regarding the culture, since women plays a critical role in the African families, let's say in this way, and when you are addressing uh, the need to promote in development from inside, the need to promote ownership, and I mentioned the education. When you mention education, you mention schools. When you mention schools, you mention families. You only mention families, you mention communities. In this value chain, there is one driver, women. One driver in Africa, women. We need to connect these dots from a policy making standpoint and be ready to give, in an increasing way, more space to women to exercise in a better position her driving, her driving role. Youth and young people uh, in terms of, let me establish a relationship between youth African youth and the team of the year. Uh, and now I would like here to bring the two dimensions. Let's start youth and arts and culture from uh, arts and culture from uh, and craft, painting. Youth in Africa, they have been the advocates the advocates of the African hearts in general. If you go to any African city, that city has not been providing the required levels of employment to the African, to the young population. But that same young population has been finding their way to survive. And one of the sectors that they are, they are very active is exactly, let's say, on the artistic sector, through handcrafts, painting, dance. It's just amazing when you visit any African, any African city. But let's go beyond artistic demonstrations by young people where they play a major role in Africa. They are the creators let's say in this way. They are the creators also because they need to be the creators to survive. But let's go beyond the artistic dimension of the culture, let's say. Young people, they carry the flag in terms of claiming for, again, for a more active role in building in building or in delivering development. They have been claiming for that. And I do believe that with the continental free trade area that will create a common market, uh, allowing the industrialization in Africa to have the needed or the required economy, economies of scale to be, to be implemented I do believe that we'll be in a position to create more and more opportunities for the same young people. If we put together the continental free trade area, the economies of scale that will bring to policymakers' table and, of course, the opportunities associated to that. If we link to that, to the fact that young African population is very creative and just need an ecosystem 
to channel this creativity, I do believe that local value chains can be fed in a very, I would say, significant way with the creations, the ideas of being, uh, the creations and ideas that can, that will be put on, on our tables by young population. Because when we talk about industrialization, we talk about local value chains, but you need to have ideas. You need to have partners that will enter these local value chains and down the road become products to satisfy needs. So the beginning is to have ideas, to have creative, creative ideas. Let's link that to young population, to the creativity of young population. If we do create the ecosystems for innovation, we might be creating, at the end of the day, the possibility to, to multiply the local value chains in Africa. And this is what we want from an economic transformation standpoint. The African Dialogue series uh, the 2021 edition of the African Dialogue series will be um, will be a 30-day program, um, and this is a, a, an innovation. Let's say in this way. So far, uh, African Dialogue series has been essentially a three-day program. Has been essential a three-day a three-day event program. This year is a 30-day event program because we do believe that. Uh, African Dialogue Series should be an opportunity within uh, the UN system, UN stage, uh, to talk about Africa, being Africa a priority of the UN, of the UN system. Um, uh, we'll be leveraging basically ICT platforms and the virtual. We'll be uh, broadcasting virtual exhibitions. Uh, high-profile conversations with different thinking, different minds. Um, we'll, we, we have just invited anthropologists, sociologists, students to discuss development in Africa, to discuss our challenges uh, from a different angle, from a different, from a different perspective, from a different, from a different perspective. Within this 30-day program, there will be a, a three-day a three-day public policy debate. And this three-day public policy debate will be a moment where these African intellectual anthropologists, historians, sociologists will be debating with UN entities, UN entities, uh, most of them in charge of UN systems deliver, deliver in Africa, will be debating the, 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 the three sub-teams, the one that we just we just mentioned, uh, factoring uh, history when looking for a peace and security solution, for example, harnessing culture when looking for economic transformation in Africa, or um, pay attention uh, or leveraging our heritage when trying to unleash human capital. This is what the three-day public uh, policy forum will be debating, and I hope it will be a quite, a quite enthusiastic debate between these African experts, UN entities, with a strong participation from uh, from the audience. After this 30-day, after this 30-day program, uh, with all these uh, virtual products where I hope Africa will just land in everybody's email address with music, exhibitions, conversations with the African youth. Um, I, profile, uh, I profile conversation with these different angles uh, from uh, an African intellectuality standpoint. The idea is um, to produce uh, uh, let's say, policy briefs, some documents uh, uh, that can, can be used, can be leveraged 
can be can be read by uh, who takes the decisions, who thinks about Africa, who uh, discusses and thinks Africa's development and the challenge to be to be addressed. Basically, uh, we want to 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 consolidate the African dialogue dialogue series as the as OSA advocacy flagship program in terms of building a new narrative for Africa and from Africa about Africa. Mm -hmm.